Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.3 beta 3. iOS 18.3 beta 3 is available to developers and iOS 18.3 public beta 3 should be out soon, either by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. iOS 18.3 supports all iOS 18 supported devices and has more features than just Apple intelligence, so I'll label those in the chapters separately. As far as the overall size, well, this came in at 755 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, was about the same size on the other devices here. And we've had some odd releases this week, where two days ago, Apple released tvOS 18.3 Beta 3 and HomePod OS 18.3 Beta 3, along with a MagSafe charger firmware update to 2A143. Along with iOS 18.3 Beta 3, Apple also released iPadOS 18.3 Beta 3, macOS 15.3 Beta 3, and some others. Now, as far as what's new, let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22D5055B. We're not yet on an A build. However, I do think this will be the last build before we have a release candidate build or RC. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later though. As far as other new features, there is no modem update coming from beta 2 to beta 3, so no changes there, at least for the modem update itself. And as far as new features, well, if we go into messages, and within messages, if we go to the emoji keyboard, we're still waiting for updated emoji. We don't have those just yet, but new things such as harp should show up, as well as some others once they comply to the latest Unicode standard. There is one new thing here though that I saw is if we go to the app option on the left with the plus button, you'll see if we scroll down right now it's missing, but you'll see image playground and then Genmoji sometimes. So if I go back in, go to Genmoji, go out of this, typically if I go back into the plus button here, you'll now see Genmoji. I don't know if this is a bug or it should be here and it's not showing properly, but either way, I'm seeing this only on beta three. As far as other new updates, well, if we go into our settings, Apple has updated Apple intelligence. So it seems to turn on automatically on those devices that are equipped with it, meaning iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and iPhone 16 devices, as well as iPads with M one and later processors and Macs as well. So let me know if it's turning on automatically for you and they've updated some things to do with notifications this time around. So if we go down to notifications and we're using summarize notifications, they've made some changes here. The first thing is if we go into this, maybe we'll take a look at our notifications and you'll see they're now italicized. So it's in italics, just giving me a notification of what's going on here. And also they've warned that some of the information may contain errors. So we've had this reworded, it's separated out. So we can see this if you have this enabled where it says summaries may contain errors. Also, when you enable it, it will actually make it clearer if you're turning this on for the first time that it could have issues and it's in a beta. And you can also disable notification summaries for an app directly on the lock screen. So for example, if we swipe over now on the iPad, since I didn't accidentally swipe the notification off the screen, you'll see we have a notification summary that says summarized by Apple. It's italicized or in italics. And if we swipe over a little bit and go to options, it now says turn off news summaries. We can turn these off directly from the lock screen now. According to 9to5Mac and some additional information they have, they've been told that notification summaries have been temporarily disabled entirely for the news and entertainment category of apps. They'll be re-enabled for the category with a future software update when Apple refines the experience. So hopefully we'll see that re-enabled soon. I think it's showing for news because it's from Time Magazine, not from the news app itself, but we'll have to see if that goes away for now. When it comes to anything else, well, beta two actually added some features that are not for Apple intelligence. So if we go on iPhone 11 here and maybe go to the calculator and maybe put in nine times eight, tap equals, we can tap equals again, and it will continue to multiply. So this is something that we had prior to iOS 18 that they finally added back. Also, they added robot vacuum support again with beta two that's available in the home app. If you have something that supports that. So hopefully we'll see that added soon with different vacuums around the house with smart vacuums. Other things Apple announced today have to do with monthly payment plans in the wallet. So if you're using Apple wallet, just like you can in the Apple card, if you have a synchrony MasterCard, you can now do the same where you can schedule payments or even sort of have a payment plan altogether. Apple's also making it easy to donate today or the other day they announced this to the LA wildfires. If we go into the app store, go to apps, give it a second to load. We can quickly donate from here or we can donate from within the music app as well.
Apple is really pushing severance as well. And that's in the TV app. That's a series that if you haven't watched it is pretty different, something a little bit new. And for those that went to grand central in New York city, they had a small office set up just like severance. So they're really pushing this. It starts on Friday and silo also ends on Friday as well with the finale. So lots of things coming up with that with TV plus. As far as anything else new, well, so far there's no battery intelligence. Hopefully we'll see that. This seems simple enough where you would plug in your phone to charge it, lock it, and it would tell you how much longer it will take to finish charging. We have that on the Mac. We don't have it on the iPhone for some reason. Also, there's no new wallpaper here for iPhone 15. So if again, we go into our wallpaper, go to add a wallpaper, scroll down, you'll see we still have the same wallpaper. They haven't brought those back. I'm not sure why, but if you're seeing them, let me know in the comments below. As far as bug fixes, well, there are no release notes as of the time of this video. If I refresh here, they still have the beta two release notes. Hopefully they update this soon and we can talk more about this in the weekend follow-up video, but they still haven't updated it. They haven't added it to the feedback app either. So if we go into feedback, you'll see we have the releases from the other day with tvOS 18.3 beta three and watchOS 11.3 beta to three. So it's taking them a while to up with it update. Now, as far as remaining bugs, well, the wallpaper saturation bug is still definitely there. So if we swipe home, you'll see it resaturates the wallpaper. It's quite evident on this particular wallpaper. As far as any other bugs, well, so far I haven't witnessed any at all. Some people have mentioned that the icons are a little odd when you go to dark mode and then you go back to settings, things sort of go back to the light mode with the light mode icons. But if we go back to dark mode, we're not sure if this is attached to the home screen icons or to dark mode. It goes back and forth and seems a little bit inconsistent, but we'll have to take a look over the next few days, see what bugs are there. Let me know if you're experiencing any bugs or if they've resolved anything, and we'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up. As far as releases, well, iOS 18.3 RC is what I would expect next probably next week. That could be anywhere from Monday to Thursday. We don't really know since Apple isn't really following a typical release schedule, but typically on Tuesday or Wednesday is when they release those. So we could see those then. And we could also see iOS 18.3 release to the public as soon as probably maybe the 27th or so. We don't really have a specific date, but if we have the RC next week, I would expect it the Monday of the 27th. Then we'll move on to iOS 18.4 betas. We also could in time see iOS 18.2.2. We could see that as soon as maybe tomorrow or sometime early next week. However, with iOS 18.3, not too far away, they may just be holding off until then, but they did stop signing iOS 18.2. As far as overall performance, so far it's pretty good. Initially it was a little bit slow and stuttery, but after we gave it a few minutes, it seemed to speed right up. Everything from scrolling with ProMotion, everything else seems to be nice and smooth. However, some have noticed that maybe animation speeds are a little bit slower. Apple seems to modify these from time to time, but overall it seems to perform fine. As far as the heat, well, it stayed nice and cool, surprisingly cool, even right after installing the update. So I've been pretty impressed there so far. And as far as battery life, well, again, this is something we'll have to take a closer look at in the weekend follow-up. But if we go to battery, battery health, I'm at 105 cycles with 100% capacity. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday I only had four hours and 14 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 43 minutes of screen idle time and used almost 100% of my battery. So yesterday it used a lot of power where I got similar screen active time the day before and only used under 75%. Hopefully it improves a little bit with this new beta. So we'll have to wait and see again in a few days and see if that holds true. As far as overall storage, well, it does continue to take up quite a bit of storage. If we go into iPhone storage, we'll scroll down to the bottom. iOS is taking up 18.27 gigabytes with Apple intelligence taking up 6.28 gigabytes. And as far as system data, I've mentioned before, this can go up and down. Sometimes it's one gigabyte, sometimes it's 50. It just depends on what it's doing. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.3 beta three, well, if you're on beta two, absolutely. I would definitely install it. If you want to try out something new, typically I would wait for the public beta and they seem to be pretty stable so far. However, I would not expect it to be better than 18.2.1 just yet. We don't know that for sure, but again, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. As far as overall benchmarks, I did run those on two phones here with Geekbench six. So if we go to the CPU history and take a look, 
You'll see the scores side by side here, where the iPhone 16 Pro Max scored 3,504 for single core, 8,674 for multi-core. That's pretty good compared to what we had before. I ran it earlier, gave it some time to cool down, and ran it again and it improved today. But in general, it seems to be right where it should be, and the overall experience shouldn't really change too much. But in general, that's just to give you an idea of what it's like on your device. As far as anything else, well, so far I haven't seen any other features. Hopefully we'll see some more by the time it releases to the public, updates with Siri and more, but it looks like maybe they're waiting for all of those for iOS 18.4. If you found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.